It is good to be here tonight, and I trust that you are here hungering and thirsting after more and more of God. I really appreciated uh, everything. The first song really ministered to my heart, uh, thirsting for more and deeper communion. I trust that is your, your heart tonight. I don't know if you're into U.S. history. Anybody like U.S. history? Okay, a couple people, a couple people kind of halfway. Yeah, I was halfway, and then I taught school for a couple years, and they gave me history, and I really developed a love for history. And one of the, one of the years I taught, we t- focused on United States history, and so that was an intriguing study to me. Uh, I developed some convictions while I taught history, Uh, They say we have a Christian nation. I have a firm conviction that the United States was never Christian and probably never will be. That's kind of another subject. Very good morals, though. Established on good, I would say, Old Testament morals. So that may, some people don't appreciate when I say that, but I have a firm conviction on that in uh, just studying some of the men. However, I will say that some of the men inspired me. And this would be interesting, but uh, maybe if you want to, if you dare to, uh, tell me your favorite United States president. Uh, That's dangerous turf right there. (laughs) Thank you. Nothing more is needed. Uh, (laughs) I had a story about him. I really enjoyed United States history reading about Abraham Lincoln. And I'm told on his deathbed he may or may not have even given his life to the Lord and became a Christian. I don't know, but I remember reading a story that he was riding in a coach with a colonel from Kentucky. And this particular colonel opened up I mean, took a bottle of whiskey out of his pocket, and he said, Mr. Lincoln, would you like a drink? Mr. Lincoln said, no, thank you. By the way, I don't drink whiskey. Never did. Never will. Okay? A little bit later, same colonel from Kentucky, riding with Abraham Lincoln, pulled out of his, probably the other side of his pocket, and pulled out a, Cigar, lit it up, said, Mr. Lincoln, would you like a cigar? Would you like a smoke? He said, nope, never smoked, never did, never will. Okay, silence. Then Lincoln said, I want to tell you a story. He said, one day when I was about nine years old, my mother called me to her bedside. She was sick very sick, she said, Abe, the doctor tells me that I'm not going to get well. Abe, I want the best for you. Abe, could you promise me before I die that you will never use whiskey and never smoke as long as you live? Could you do that? And Abe told, nine-year-old Abe told his dying mother, I will not. Then he looked over at Colonel from Kentucky and said, now I got a question. Would you advise me to break that commitment today? And then the Colonel said, no. And then the Colonel said this, what I would give for a mother who would have called me to that commitment. I probably would have a very different life. Well, that's a story about U.S. history and a United States president that struck a chord, that resonated with me. And I wonder what would happen if I and if you would take our commitment to Jesus Christ, that serious. 
There are messages, actually most messages, probably everyone that teaches Sunday school and preaches sermons or teaches in any way, just kind of feels like when, when, you, when you're before an audience, all you should do is just take a big old mirror and just set it right here, you know what I mean? And, just, uh, and this particular message is very uh, convicting to me. I titled it, I Want To or I Will. I Want To or I Will. In John 14, I'm basically going to read a verse. I'm going to go a theme tonight again. So I'm going to read a verse to establish the theme. And in John 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and said, He's speaking to Judas, not his, not his chariot. Judas kind of asked him, how are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Okay. Loaded question, Jesus said unto him. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. And I'm going to stop there. It's kind of hard to just break in and grab that verse. I know that's so dangerous. I don't like to do it. I am learning more and more contextual, uh, taking things out of context, but I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm taking this out of context tonight. What I'm trying to do is establish the point of commitment with the two words, I will. That verse rings with commitment, at least when I read it. I just see commitment. And tonight what I want to do in the title, I want to or I will, I would like to contrast tonight. I would like to paint a picture of contrast. And the contrast is commitment versus desire, okay? The difference is huge. I want to, I will huge chasm between the two. And I want us to see the difference tonight between desire and good intentions and commitment so that we become intentional in making commitments. That's my desire tonight. I'm going to break the message down into three simple parts and the first part is the bulk of it. It's going to be the basic of commitment, or you could say commitment 101. And in that point, we're going to just kind of look at some examples. We're going to talk about definitions. Uh, we're going to even look at just a little bit of human anatomy. It is the basics of commitment. And then I want to just uh, go to the Bible and look at some uh, Bible references on I will and some amazing things that I found in statistics on I will in the Bible. And then finally, I just want to uh, endeavor to make it practical. What does that look like in 2023 to you and to me? So, the basics of commitment. I want to say right up front, love is built on commitment. You take away commitment, I don't think you have love, right? Now, I really, last night I talked about no greater love. I enjoy that theme. It is my favorite theme, and it is probably one of the most preached messages that I have ever done on just God's love or the blood of Jesus. That's really where it's at, the cross. And I like to follow up that message on just pondering the, the point of love being reciprocal. When you get a hold of God's love, it is going to equate you loving God. And my passage of Scripture I wanted to go to was John 21, but I just felt led to go otherwise tonight. So just a little bit of John 21. It's a message you're probably not going to get. But John 21 is one of my favorites, one of my heroes. My friend Peter, he said, I'm done with it. This following Jesus thing isn't working like I thought it was, and I'm going fishing. And he went fishing, and he fished all night. And you know what he caught? Nothing. 
And then Jesus comes along, and you know the story, right? He said, just put your net in the other side of the fish. That's pretty insulting to a professional fisher, right? He knew where to fish, when to fish, how to fish. He knew everything about fish. He was professional. And here comes a man on the shore saying, like, just get your net and go to the other, other side. <laughs> and then he put it on the other side, and he brought in, like, what was it, 318 or something like that fish? Bible? 153, thank you, 150, 150, thank you, 153 fish. The crux of the matter is, at, during, the fish, during the early morning fish barbecue, Jesus encounters Peter and asks him probably the most important question a man could, well, one of the most important questions a man could ever be asked. And it, was, it wasn't, Peter, what's your strategy? Well, how are you going to handle this? I'm, gonna be res- I mean, I'm going to be, I mean, I'm going back to the Father. I want to know exactly how you're going to do this thing. You're gonna, the church is going to be, you've you got, you, you got a huge responsibility Upon this rock, I will, how are you going to, simple question, do you love me, do you love me, do you love me, three times, and if somebody said to you one time, do you love me, ooh, that gets your attention, I dare you to ask somebody two times, and I really dare to ask you somebody three times, and then change the wording, do you, do you, Love me. Do you love me? And then the third time, do you even like me a little bit? That's the play on, that's the, if you look at the Greek words, that's really what it looked like. It's huge. We're talking about commitment tonight. So they kind of go hand in hand. I'm going to say love is built on commitment. I, I've been to a lot of weddings. Do you like weddings? Yeah? You you got a wedding invitation? Yes, another wedding. I'm so excited. (laughs) Some of us don't do that. <laughs> Some of you do, maybe. And I don't know if, you're, if you really are excited about weddings or not, but there's actually one part of the wedding, that, no, two parts that I really like. I mean, some people are all about, I mean, I come home from a wedding and some, I'm, sometimes I may ask, oh, what color was this? What color? I have no clue. I don't, I don't have no clue, but... I can almost tell you about what the guy's face looked like when the bride came in. Uh, that's the part I, I, I really enjoy watching. I like to watch his face. The guy's oblivious of anybody else around, and I'm okay with that, totally okay with that. He's usually oblivious, okay? And the other part that I really like is when they face each other. Now, they do it different ways, and I don't know. Maybe there's a standard. Maybe I don't know how you got married. When I got married, uh, I actually didn't have the option to, say, to write out a vow. Um, sometimes it's just said, and then you just acknowledge, and that's totally okay. But I, I like that part. I really do. And I, I kind of like the, the ones that they, they uh, maybe write about four or five sentences. I will promise, I will promise, and I will. They put some thought into it. I have never yet been to a wedding where the bride said, or the, or the groom said, uh, maybe the minister said, will you, so-and-so, by God's grace, promise to, do, 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 you know. And I never heard a person yet say, I'll try, <laughs> or I want to. <laughs> I've never yet, have you? I mean, they're, I will, I will. Well, I guess they're told to say that, or, you know, they write, and I, 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 get, I get it, okay? You know what's really sad? What's really, really, really sad when they say I will, but they don't. I will promise, as long as I live, and a couple years later, that's really sad. Imagine if a groom would say, well, I want to love you. I'll try to stand by you. I'm hoping to keep myself for you. It all depends how it goes. I say that to say, to bring us to commitment. Commitment 101. That's what I'm talking about tonight. I want to versus I will. No, they promise. And the Bible actually, there's a beautiful verse in Malachi that says, the wife of thy covenant. That's loaded. you We pledge allegiance to our spouse. And how much more should we be uh, determined to pledging allegiance to the lamb? Last night we noted the lamb going to the slaughter. No greater love. 
baptismal services. Love them. What's my favorite part of the baptismal service? Seeing how much water goes on. <laughs> that is kind of interesting. <laughs> but the part that I really like in a baptismal service is, yeah, they do formally usually say, I will, I do, I will, I will. But I don't know how you do it here, but usually the person before they're baptized, they just give a, a, a testimony. And sometimes they're young and sometimes it's so simple and, but, but profound. I mean, to have anybody stand up and say, I recognize I was a sinner. And however it happened, however God's convicting, convicting work happened, and I will, by the grace of God, live for Jesus Christ, please pray for me. It can be so simple, but so profound. In fact, I usually, when somebody's uh, preparing a testimony, I say there's two things that are very important. Very important. And actually, what would really be interesting is get everybody to write out your salvation story. You'll probably find several points in your story articulated in so many different ways, but it has to have some elements. It has to have uh, a conviction, recognizing God's Spirit working in you. It has to have an element of repentance. It has to have it. And it has to have a belief. I told you about uh, belief. I, I believe. I just, I, I appreciate when young, when anybody can, can say that. I will. I will. I will. I told you a little bit about, or did I talk about my crossroads years? I don't remember if I talked about it or not, but I had crossroad years that my fr good friend was killed suddenly in 1991. I was, we were married in 1990. Good friend killed in 1991, twinkling of an eye, stood beside his casket. I was so devastated. I did, anyway, a long journey, and I, I basically call my crossroad years uh, repentance years. And you, do you know that your salvation story is not complete with repentance? It is not complete with repentance. And, cause, trust me, I tried it. I tried everything in the book to, to patch up my teenage years. I stopped at this person, I stopped here, and I stopped there, and I stopped here, and I stopped there, and I did this, and I did that, and I paid him, and I paid her, and I, I'm exaggerating probably, but I talked to my dad, and I just, you know what was missing? And it was good, I, it's, it's, it's my story, okay? And I think God maybe had me in the frying pan for, I probably, I probably needed that, but then there came a time where I got to go beyond, not, repentance doesn't bring you peace. Repentance is simply turning from worldly values to kingdom values. It includes, re, it includes getting rid of sin and confessing and all that. But repentance is a lifestyle. Rep there's a lot, of, a lot of us that need repentance. And it's adhering to kingdom values. That's what repentance is. What, and I was... So I had to come to the point where I would just believe. Without believing, what I talked about last night, what I, that's, that's your salvation story. Anyway, I don't know if you've ever done that, but it would be a very good exercise. I don't know how, how long ago it was. A large church, Myerstown Mennonite, we decided everybody's going to, I mean, just the young people share their testimony. Every single member is going to share their personal testimony. It was the best Wednesday night services we had for probably, probably lasted a couple years. Two or three a night. Everybody wrote out their story. Wow, it was, it was amazing. Some of the things I never knew about this person and that person's journey. And I sat with them in the pews. Anyway, uh, I enjoy weddings, I enjoy baptismal services, I really like the commitment part of them. I had a friend while I lived in Grenada, he was frustrating to me. He's a very good friend of mine, in fact when I go back to Grenada today, we can sit down and catch up right where we left off maybe 10 years ago, just did it back in December. Anyway, he had this phrase that really bothered me, he said, the flesh, no, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That was his, uh, that was his uh, justification for anything he did wrong. And you know what? Today, he's not walking with the Lord. You know what? You, you know how I analyze his lifestyle? He wanted to, he wanted to, but he didn't come to the place where he said, I will. And how can somebody live a whole life, a whole life of desire 
They know what's right, but they live in defeat. I think it's simply because they never left I want to and never got a hold of the horns of the altar of I will. And I'm telling you, that makes all the difference in life. I will. Good intentions fade away, some of the songwriter, a songwriter has, has wrote. And I really believe that the devil and the Lord know these terms well. Show me somebody that says, I want to. Show me somebody that says, I'll try. Uh, I, I don't know what all happens in the heavenlies, but I think a lot more happens in the heavenlies than I, think, than I think we give credit to. Show me a person that says, I will, by the grace of God, I will. And I believe there is a God of heaven that just pours out the grace into that person's life based on commitment. Look at David. Was he a perfect man? No. Did he say, I will? We're going to get to him soon. Uh, I really believe that it is very, very, very big. Webster. I want. No, want. Webster, definition, want. To desire greatly. Fail to have. To need. It's very much related to I will try. That's Webster. Webster on will. The mental faculty... Mental faculty by which one deliberately chooses and decides on a course of action. Exercise of the will, choice, determination, says Webster. I don't often go to Webster for inspiration, but Webster kind of inspired me on those, on those definitions. I really believe that this is the battleground, the real battleground, and it happens in our minds. And I really believe that some things, sometimes we don't even realize it is happening. And let me say this, this is strong, but I believe all eternal destinies are determined on this battleground right here. I want to or I will. It's as far apart as heaven and hell. That may be a very strong statement, but I am kind, I, my desire is to lift up the principle of commitment tonight. Good old-fashioned commitment. My testimony... Uh, on October 31st, 1993, in essence, I got tired of this. I will, I'll try, I will, I will. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I want to, I want to, I'll try. And long story short is I will. And in a little prayer room praying with a couple people, I don't remember much of what happened, but I do remember, I specifically remember one phrase that came out of my mouth. And it said something like this, Lord, I will serve you. And it wasn't a fancy sinner's prayer, trust me. But my journey was very, very in, in interesting and, and unique. I wouldn't recommend my journey to anyone. I was teaching Sunday school at that point. But I was, uh, some things were just not right. I needed, I needed commitment. I needed commitment to believe. I needed commitment to go beyond repentance. I need commitment that's the, that, that believed in the blood of Jesus and said, I will. My goal is to motivate every one of us here tonight to be intentional in commitment. I will, I will, I will. Somebody once told me when you're speaking, you have pick out one tree and you just aim at that tree from every angle you can think of. Tonight the tree is... I will, okay? I will, I will, I will. That's what I want, us to, I want us to remember. And by the way, we're not talking about our self-will, our stubborn will, or unbroken wills. That's a, that's a clarification. We need grace. Not one of us, not one of us is worthy, and we cannot do it on our own. That's why last night is so important. No greater love reaches down and draws us and brings us to the cross and where we have to be honest and we have to look to Jesus and we basically have a choice to say, I, w I want to or I will. Hopefully every one of you knows that you're at the cross and you are, I will. I will, I will, I will. Commitment, good old-fashioned commitment. Commitment to the Lord, it starts there. Commitment to the family. We live in a day where there's very shallow commitments in the home. And it grieves me, not in Indiana probably. Commitment in the church. And I want to tell you right now, it's all a package. You won't have somebody that's deeply committed to the Lord and he's not committed to the family and not committed to the church. It won't happen. Commitment. Oh, how we need it. 
you know a little bit about your makeup, right? Uh, spirit, soul, body. Thessalonians tells us. Spirit, soul, body. That's from the inside out. The spirit is uh, probably your conscience. I think I like to call it your innate ethic. It's a God-shaped vacuum that is dead until you come to Christ. It is quickened and made alive. Your, your spirit, it's the, it's the new birth. Something happens inside and you can commune with God. I know it's birth. It's a new birth, so it's kind of like a baby. You don't expect to under, a baby to understand or walk without uh, growing and learning to walk and so on. But that's the spirit part of you. The soul is, I believe, it includes the, the mind, the will, the emotions. When God said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness made he him. And I believe what God was saying is just like, like God is, I'm sorry, God has a, a mind to reason, a will, a choice, and emotions to feel. That's, that's how God said, I will make man in my image and then of course the body that's what we see that includes your sight hearing taste and smell and all of that but it is important for all of us to recognize that we are created as free moral agents in other words we have the power to choose sometimes i wonder why god did it that way but i guess yeah i don't i shouldn't say i wonder it wouldn't be very much uh, probably wouldn't bring God much pleasure to have a whole bunch of robots that he is just navigating and with his little joysticks and how much more of a blessing it is to God when, we, when he has free moral agents that are choosing to serve him and to love him and, and, and so on. It is also important to recognize that we, our lives have been shaped greatly and affected by others. I recognize that. The longer I live, the softer my heart gets towards some people who experience things that I, can, I, that I can't even imagine. And I do have a very tender heart towards those that have really been affected negatively by their family, peers, and so on and so on. Uh, we cannot, if, if you had a godly family, you cannot thank God enough for a godly family that has helped shape you and develop your worldview and point you towards God. I thank God for that. Every one of us, everyone has suffered from evil deeds and words of others. Everyone. Today, I can remember some things uh, probably about a 10 to 12 year old boy said to me on a church pew verbatim, I can't tell you how they cut. It actually really affected me more than I ever could have realized. Every one of us has been affected by the choice of others. I'm saying I have a very sympathetic heart towards those, but I am here to say, by God's grace, and by the help of brothers and sisters, we can go beyond. We can go beyond and make choices because God gave us a choice. God gave us, we're not robots. We're not robots that are only programmed by past. We're free moral agents. And I believe that with a soft heart that goes to the cross, God is able to give the grace that anyone needs for whatever they experienced. And I know some people that are living very godly, victorious lives that experience extreme trauma. There's a great danger in minimizing the will. But also there's a great danger in, in, in thinking that it didn't affect you. Well, it's time to move on. Secondly, just a few Bible uh, references. I did an exercise, and I, you want know, to shout, shout a uh, guess out, go for it. I looked up will in the Bible. I used King James Version for this one. I looked up will, and then I looked want. No, it was, it was a phrase. I will, and then I want to. I will, I want to. Check it out. 
Anybody want to guess? I will. In the Bible. You're a normal congregation. <laughs> That's what I do, what I have no clue. 1900 and uh, 20, 21, 1921 is what I came up with. And what was really fascinating to me, I want to, anyone want to take a guess? 1921? What do you think? Half? Well, I'd like to do a raise of hands. Did you look that up? <laughs> that was a good guess. Zero. Not a one. You won't find it. Now, I know that may be exaggerated. There's, there's, uh, there's probably some, some ideas that you could get the phrase, I want to, equivalent, but... That was, that was so interesting to me. I, I remember looking at this subject, I want to, I will, 1921 to zero. I'm trying to highlight something. I'm trying to highlight the gap between I want to and I will. I would like you to, re, to turn with me to uh, Psalm 101. Psalm 101, a very short psalm. This one is packed. It should and could be a message all in its own. And... It is written by David in some Bibles. It's going to say David's Psalm of Commitment. You may have a Bible that says that, that gives it that header. Psalm 101, very short, Psalm of David. Now listen, listen to this. I'm going to add emphasis, okay? But try to count them. Try to count the wills. I will or I will not. I will sing of the mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing? I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will come walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart, will not I suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that Telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. I don't know if you were counting, but you got at least seven. And you could add a few if you get the shells. I shall not. And, I sh uh, and I'm not going to unpack it. But the point is, look at David. Look at his, I will, I will not, I will not let anything, I mean, first of all, I will sing. I wish everybody would walk into the church service saying that. I will sing. <laughs> and I will behave myself wisely. I will walk with a perfect heart. Oh, and that's why I'm saying that this message would be a lot better for me to just do it right into a mirror. I will not look at him. I, I, I will not, A, B, C, D, E, Psalm 119, I'm not going to turn to it, sometimes as, a, as a, just a little bit of humor. Do you ever have family devotions and you're in a hurry? Doesn't happen in Indiana, it happens in Pennsylvania, right? So I'm in a hurry, so I say, uh, and maybe some of the children are in a hurry, they got to go, or so, and I said, okay, turn with me to Psalm 119, we'll do an act, verse by verse, <laughs> Psalm 119, you know, is the longest psalm in the Bible. But sometime go through Psalm 119 and notice all the I will, I will. He, David says, I will keep thy precepts. I will meditate. He says, I will delight. And then he says this, get, get this. At midnight, I will rise and give you thanks, oh God. <laughs> Maybe that's a hyperbole, I'm not sure, but... In other words, David is not afraid to move drastically from I. In fact, he's not going to even say it in the, in the Bible. I want to. He said, I will. Is that you tonight? Is that me? I will. I will. I will not. Examine your prayer life. And this is where I need a mirror again. Examine your prayer life. Analyze your prayers. 
Why is it so easy? I'll try. Help me, Lord. I want to. God. But it's a little harder to say, I will. I will. I will. I will not. I will not. I will. You know, God is not afraid to make commitments. Uh, I, I, should, I must read these beautiful verses, verses in 2 Corinthians. Uh, Paul is writing, and he says this, and he's just kind of reflecting God's commitment to his people. But it is so refreshing. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says... Uh, he asked some very interesting questions. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? What, you are the temple of the living God. God said, I'm in verse 16, I will dwell in them I, and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come them out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Well, they are conditional, but notice God's commitment. Oh, we could go over so many more. I will in no wise cast out. I will come again. I will raise him up in the last day. I will never leave thee or forsake thee. Do your own, uh, compile your own I wills from God. It is so refreshing. Lastly, in closing, I want to just try to make it a little practical. What does it look like for you? What does it look like for me? Sometimes when I don't know where to go, one of my favorite passages is the Sermon on the Mount. There is so much in the Sermon on the Mount. I am sure you've studied it. I'm, maybe you, some of you have even memorized it. It is a treasure. It is so much wealth. But let's just take a few points in the Sermon on the Mount. I mean, the very, I'm just going to hit the real clear ones, okay? Anger. Leave your gift before the altar and reconcile. Be reconciled to your brother. Okay, now it's so easy for me to say, Lord, I want to be, you know, I want to, I, I don't want to show anger. But what would happen if I would take every one of these points and write out a commitment? Here's your, here's an exercise that I would, I would encourage you to do. Go through the Sermon on the Mount, write out an I will and an I will not for anger. Take the next one, lust. Write a I will and write an I will not. You know, the devil's so happy with us saying, I want to, I want to, I want to. So many accountability groups do that. I want to, I want to, I want to. Oh, but what would happen if I would, I will, I will not? What about telling the truth? We talked about that on uh, Monday night. You know, let your yay be yay and your nay nay. Basically what Jesus is saying, it's time for honesty, total honesty. Let your yes be yes and your no. What would happen if I would say, I will and I will not in relation to honesty? Oh, retaliation. Don't fight back or non-resistance. I like to call it suffering love. What would happen if I would write out, I will, I will not, I will turn the other cheek. love your enemy what would happen if i would say i will you know i already said this did i say yeah i said it tonight you know don't don't ever i don't believe in forgive and forget some maybe you do i'm just not i guess i'm not spiritual enough to do it but i i can remember too much i can remember things that hurt But what would happen? What would happen if I would say, it hurts, but I will bless them. I will pray for them. I will, I will. I think, that, I think there's going to be a power to maybe almost forget and maybe forget 95%. What would happen if I would put some meat to I will and I will not on the subject of giving? What would happen if I would get serious about praying, and I will, and I want, I want to pray more. We heard it. We, we get used to hearing it. I say it. I need the mirror again. My prayer life, what would happen if I would, I will, I will not? What would happen if I would do that on fasting? What would happen if I would do that on laying up treasures? Don't lay up treasures. 
What would happen if I would say, okay, because of that clear teaching, I will, I will not. What would happen if I would come to the point about don't worry about your stature and how God made you and, and your food, I mean, your, your uh, things that you can't change and the subject of worry. What would happen if I would say, I, I will, I will not. Homework's getting longer, right? But that's really where it's at. That's really where your Christianity is going to make. That's really where you embrace kingdom values. Don't worry. Don't judge. I will. I will not. The golden rule. I will. I will not. I just tried to grab a few points out of the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is so beautiful, so practical. You may or may not have read or heard about Jonathan Edwards. Um, He, I'm not here to promote him or lift him up, but he definitely had left an imprint or an impact on, on, uh, on Christianity. Maybe some of you read he had 70 resolves. And I'm not going to read Jonathan Edwards' 70 resolves. You can easily find that. It's an easy study, easy search. Just look up Jonathan Edwards' 70 resolves. And there were 70 things that he had outlined. Some were, uh, some were overall life. Some were time management. Some were relationships. Some were character. And some were spiritual life. So that was his categories. Then, under, then he had subpoints, And he totaled 70. A few of them were, I will never do anything in my lifetime that I would not do in the last hour of my life if I knew it was my last hour. That's a commitment. I, I will not do anything. I will never do anything out of revenge. I will not speak evil of someone. I will reread this list every week. <laughs> That's Jonathan Edwards. I, I don't know. I think he, I think he was on to something. I think, I think what he practiced would help me and maybe would help you. So, what will you do with your I wills and I want tos? A few more that I often hear is, I want to enhance my devotional life. Every, that, that, that's just that's something we always say. What would happen if we would change that to I will and spell it out? I mean, is it something about spending a lot of, and I'm not here to say it's an, a certain amount of time. I think people can get legalistic on their, on their commitments, actually. But I wonder what would happen if I would say, okay, when possible, I will always spend. Or has to do with my alarm clock, right? And your alarm clock. It has to do with choices that we make. What happens? I mean, did you ever hear someone say, I I really want to work on my relationship with that person? And I'm kind of back to this thing about... uh, relationships are so fragile and don't ever think that you always you can always forget everything bad that ever happened to you but what would happen if i would i'm kind of back to the sermon on the mount i will bless them i will pray for them i will forgive them and i will not talk about them negatively Uh, so many people want to be a better financial steward and maybe it's for their own benefit you know maybe it's not out of conviction but just so ends meet okay i guess that is a good reason but there's a a, a more nobler plateau than just to en- make ends meet but just to just to obey the the lord what what would happen if I, I will this is touchy ground but maybe you do have a budget maybe you don't have a budget but some people definitely need budget some people can budget without a budget and so but what would happen if I would, I will, I will, I will not. I will never spend more than I have. I won't do it. In, a, in a, any under circumstance, if, if my credit card bill comes and I wasn't prepared, it's, it's, I'm getting this biggest scissors and I'm going to ask five men to keep me. What would happen? Maybe there's nobody in your circles that has any uh, financial holes, but... Uh, and I understand some things happen in the business world and all that, but I'm just, I'm, I'm talking about just kind of practical, disciplined things. Uh, I, some, some of us will even pray, Lord, I want to be a blessing in the church. I want to. What would happen if we would change that to say, I will be available. I will be supportive. I will regularly pray. I will make a, the brothers and the sisters and the, the ministry team a daily point in my prayer time you will be an asset to the congregation. 
I, I want to know more of the Bible. I want to know more. I don't know enough. I will take a slice out of my life and go to Bible school. I will read the Bible every, uh, through every year. I, you fill in the blanks. I want to have a better marriage. I want to honor my parents. I could go, I could go, uh, I could develop more points under that. The last one, I want to be a Christian. Ah! There are people that want to be a Christian. They do. Maybe you're here tonight and I want to be a Christian. But it looks like a big jump. I want to encourage you. I will... I don't care how you do it. I don't care if you stand up right after the service. I don't know if I'll give an invitation or not, but I, somehow may, take the leap and say, I will repent. I, I will turn away from my sinful nature myself. I will admit that I am a sinner. I, I, I will believe in Jesus and believe that the blood was shed and will cover my sin and I'm not going to try to pay the debt myself. I will believe it. I will repent. I will believe. I will confess. I will make it known. Nobody's going to wonder and I will follow Jesus. That's becoming a Christian. So if you're here tonight and you want to become a Christian, do it. I will. Go home and talk to your dad. Talk to your parents. I will. Move from I want to to I will. It is not God's will that one soul would perish. All come to repentance. The last little picture, and then I'm done for sure. Jesus, it breaks my heart when he looked at Jerusalem at the end of his life, and he was going to Jerusalem, and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times would I gather you? I wanted to take you like a, like a hen, would gather the little chicks and I wanted to put you under my wings. And what's the next words? And you would not. That's an act of the will. I'm guessing that nobody would say that. I will not. I will not. I will in, in responses to good things. They wanted to. They tried to but they didn't say, I will. And those words, you would not, you would not, will ring and echo down the corridors of hell for eternity. You would not, you would not, you would not. Don't let it happen to you. I will, I will, I will. 